All right, hope everyone's doing wonderful today. Today, what I got in store is gonna be opening up and checking out this old Magic the Gathering fat pack from the set Savers of Kamigawa. Let's just dive into this and have some fun. I've never opened up a fat pack this old. I always wanted to and got one at a good price, so that'd be perfect. Let's just go ahead and take off the cellophane just so we can read the text a little bit better, and then we'll go from there. All right, let's just see what this is about. This is from the set, Savers of Kamigawa. I always loved the Kamigawa block when I was younger. It's one of my favorite. You had the samurais, uh, uh, the ninjas, and stuff like that. Love making a samurai deck as well. It says set three of three of the Kamigawa block. It is an expert level, uh, I guess, pack. It's Magic the Gathering. This is a fat pack before they called them bundles. This is from Savers of Kami. It has the Savers of Kamigawa Player's Guide. It has six booster packs from Kamigawa. Uh, Savers of Kamigawa. The Savers of Kamigawa novel. Yes, it's used to come with novels. It comes with two premium cards. And then the Savers of Kamigawa spin down life counter. So it came with all of this stuff in such a different design. Nowadays, the fat packs where the bundles have like uh, a storage box. This one doesn't really have one so much. It just has the packs right here. It has the book right here. It actually gave you a book back in the day. And I think this is the player guide up the top. We'll take everything out and see what it's about. Let's just see what's on the back. This includes one spin down life counter with kind of like the lantern house on the side. Just says Magic the Gathering down here. And what's it say up top? It says uh, the battle for peace. That's what it says up here. It says uh, the Kami world uh, closes in on reality with devastating effects. Kamigawa will never be the same. With the savers of Kamigawa set, you can turn the tide and restore balance with power crew, powerful Kirin uh, scarred ancestors and versatile uh, channel of magic. Save your world. Your allies await you in this fat pack. And just see the contents again. The Savers of Kamigawa Player's Guide includes a complete full color Savers of Kamigawa card encyclopedia, plus behind the scenes info about the latest strategies and coolest cards. It's got six of the booster packs. Punish the guilty with ancestral spirits, uh, channel magic, and celestial Kirin. Savers of Kamigawa novel. Read the novel and learn how the Uzumwa and uh, Meek Shirlo, undo the damage that Kondo's Chime has inflicted on the world. You got the premium cards, so I guess there's two premium cards. Includes a Champions of Kamigawa premium basic land cards. So you got a foil land card and a random foil uh, Savers of Kamigawa common card. Oh, that'd be cool if it could be rare. And then the Savers of Kamigawa spin down life power. Only in the fat pack, the counter comes in one of five random colors and has Savers of Kamigawa expansion symbol in place of the 20. Booster packs, theme deck, deck box. All right. And again, you got the life counter on the side. You can kind of hear it moving around in there. And then the bottom, let's just see when, when this came out. It looks like this was from... Uh, well... Hmm. I don't really see the date on it. 2005, that's when it came out. So quite a while ago. All right, let's just kind of pull out some of the stuff and see what it's about. You got the packs... Let's just see it. There's a dice in here somewhere. Let's just see what... How do you, how do, you do this? I never opened up one of these fat packs. And then you just got the box itself, literally just like for display, it looks like. And then I got myself a blue one. Cool. Really like it. And then you got the tiny little lantern house symbol on it right there. Awesome. Got myself the blue dice. And then this is nothing. Set it to the side. Let's just check out the player's guide real quick. So it does have, it is way bigger than the new ones, the player guide. Uh, it's like a full sheet at 8.5 by 11, and it does have like three ring hole punches in it, so you can throw it in your trade binder, which is pretty cool. If you have a three ring binder, throw it on in there. Uza was Endgame. Oh, I remember that guy, the cool uh, Samurai Bushido, I believe. Cool, almost looks like uh, Lillian. Let's just see what this is about. Kind of tells you some of the cards. Kami of the Crescent Moon. Uh, cool. The Imposer, Tomb of Umari. I remember that land. Shine the veal between the worlds. People and places, things. It kind of tells you about things like uh, uh, Kataki, a legendary kami, or retribution. Got Maga, a wicked human, a Jushi rumored to be a uh, service of demons. Kind of just tells you some of the lore, which is pretty cool because I don't know what half of this stuff is. Uh, Cool. Goryo, the vengeful spirit of a mortal who died in anger without the proper rights. That's a thing. Just kind of has the glossary. Worlds to the wise, smart and smarter. How cool is that? Is this the set with the card, one with nothing? I think so. Give him a hand. Cool. Just kind of tells you something larger than life. That's the spirit. 
and then it says some of their favorite cards got endless swarm going on right here in name is one kami uh kamaguro first to suffer tomb of umari i remember that land cool it got these interesting kind of like not flip cards but double sided cards once it does something you flip it on each other side and become something else hopefully you get some of those got celestial kirin uh twin cast got the moaning wall it's a bunch of cards kind of just goes you through it and then you have the glossary itself how cool is that remember this card this red card right here and you threw mud hole was unplayable cool. looks like the the test card that they had and it just has really good information here i love the art on this owl card up here beautiful owl art really nice pamphlet really has all the information that you could need I'm sure people collect these out there. Put in your left three ring binder. Again, a couple of these double sided cards. Once it does something, you flip it the other way. Hopefully, we get some of those so we can check it out in the packs as well. It just has a really nice glossary of all, all the cards in the set, which is pretty sweet. And there are foil cards in the set, so it is possible. And then a little checklist as well. So, if you want, check off all the cards that you have in regular and foil. And on the back of it, the best night of the week, FNM. Win prize cards, meet new players. How cool is that? And let's just check out this little booklet. So it does come with a book. Definitely not going to read the whole book right now. But it's really cool that these used to actually come with uh, like a novel. How cool is that? It says, uh, Guardians, Savior of Kamigawa. Kamigawa Cycle Book 3 by Scott Miku. It's a little bit bent up. The victory of the spirit world is at hand. The Ronin Toshi has sought to avoid the great conflict between the spirits and human realms. But despite his best efforts, he's not only involved in it, he's at the center of it. Together with Princess uh, Michiko, daughter of Daimo Koda, Kanda, he must find a way to stave off the impending victory of Kami while preserving his own life into the bargain. Cool. So, it's kind of just like a battle between uh, the spirit and the regular world, which is pretty cool. You can see this lady, she has a smirk on her face, and she looks like she has a knife behind her back. So, there's going to be some trickery and betrayal going on. And very, um, uh, like, uh, I think Japanese-themed or Asian-themed or Chinese-themed. I'm not really sure. Very cool. Reminds me of Samurais a lot. And, yeah, really cool that it actually comes with a book. They wouldn't do anything like this now. And I wish they did, because it's really cool if you're really interested about the lore. How cool is that? So it does come with a book as well. Pretty thick as well. How many pages is it? It's 312 pages. Wow, right on. I don't, I don't even know if they make books for Magic the Gathering anymore that I'm aware of. kind of hope they do. And then the last little thing in here is um, the booster packs themselves. I really like opening up older things, especially checking out what it's about. So it looks like this is the, the foil. The two foil packs. And you got six of these cool packs right here. Wow, love the foiling on them. Very golden yellow. Let's just open up this thing right here. See what the premium cards are. Some premium cards. You got a four land and then a common. You got an island. Basic island. Beautiful. Got the waterfall going on. Interesting floating like a uh, town hall it looks like. Awesome. And then you got promised uh, Kenushi. One green. It's a human drive with soul shift seven. It's a one one. Wow, that's pretty cool. So it's got a huge soul shift. So when it dies, you may put uh, into graveyard from play. Uh, you may return target spirit with converted mana cast seven or less from a graveyard to your hand. So this really brings back a big spirit. How cool is that? Cool common. Awesome. So these are the premium foils you get. You get a land and then you get a foil common. So they'll sit aside right here. Then you also just get some booster packs as well. So let's just kind of go through them and open them up. Really don't remember all of the cards in the set. It's been such a long time. I'm really excited to open up. I believe they said they came from 2005. 2005, you can barely see it. Really like the colors on the pack. Got like some crazy looking demon guy. Very pointy horns and back as well. Anyways, let's just open this up and have some fun with it. Really like opening up these older sets and interesting products. I've never opened up a fat pack like this. And uh, that will be really interesting to open it up and check it out with you all. Because I'm sure some of you are curious too. Let's just see. I got one called Coward by Wisdom. It's one white. It's an enchant creature. Enchant creatures can't attack or block unless it's controllers play one for each card in your hand. So the more cards in your hand, obviously they got to pay more. If you got one card in your hand, they got to pay one. If you got four cards in your hands, they got to pay four. Very interesting. Very cheap to put out there. One white. Looks like this big old demon is kneeling down to this small little angel with their head on fire. Crazy looking horns. This is my uh, Darren Batter. Got a, a Kiki 
underling, tiny little goblin warrior guy. Got a samurai warrior on a rusty little sword. I think that's rust or blood. One in a red. As long as you have seven or more cards in hand, it gets plus two, plus one, and has first strike. So the more cards you have in your hand, the stronger it gets, and it can become a 4-2, which is pretty sweet for two mana. This is around by Fant. Uh, how's Winkle? <laughs> Got a sign of the flight wings. Beautiful art. Crazy looking frog spirit guy. Got like runes for eyes. Got like a planetoid on its head or something. Four and a blue coming from this crazy cloud flying spirit. It has flying and has channel for a blue. Discard, discard. Target creature gains flying to all turn. So 3 3. And you can give a creature flying, which is its ability, if you discard it and pay blue by Scott M. Fisher. I don't know when you can do channel. Maybe you can do channel at instant speed. That I'm not sure. Hopefully you can. Looks like you got Fiddlehead Kami, made out of fiddleheads. Cool. Made out of the grass itself. Four and a green. This is drawn by Rebecca Gwai. Cool. It's a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you play Spirit or Arcani, Arcane Spell, regenerate Fiddlehead Kami. So you can regenerate every time you play Spirit. It's kind of expensive. It's five mana for a 3-3 three, three that you got to regenerate it when you play another Spirit. Yeah, it's all right. Got Death Denied. X and 2 Black. Look like these skeleton people are getting shocked by some crazy energy of lightning. You can see the hand right there shooting in with the lightning. Beautiful bright purples and whites going through there. Lovely dark blue background. Just three of the guys knocked on down. Instant Arcane. Uh, return X target cards, creature cards from your grave to your hand. It's drawn by Greg Hildebrandt. So return however many creatures you want from grave to your hand. You got a uh, Shyness of the Stars Light. Two and a white Spirit with first strike, it has channel. When you channel this card, target creature gains first strike to another turn. So channel pretty much gives the ability of whatever the card has to another creature. Looks like an interesting spirit. There's like four of these crazy looking fish. You got some fairies in the background with keys. I'm not sure what's going on. They're holding swords. Looks like the fairies have keys. You got the beautiful sky in the background. They're emitting from the lava. Like there's some sort of shooting star. Beautiful art. This is insane by Jeremy Jarvis. This is a 2-1 creature with first strike. It looks like they're shooting star with some fairies with keys following them. Unlocking the doors to secrets. Got a Ideas Unbound. Two blue. Uh, sorcery. Arcane. Uh, draw three cards. Discard three cards at end of turn. Two blue for draw three. So you draw three cards, then discard three cards at the end of turn. Hopefully you can play all those cards so you don't have to discard them all. Crazy looking... Guy is like sucking out his memories or something like that. Bizarre. And he's just writing it down in the book. Like Mark Tendon. How cool is that? You got Matthew Tribe Birdstalker. Two and two green. Probably has reach. I could be wrong though. Looks like a frog person hanging out there with multiple arms. They got four arms and two legs. I was going to say, how are they hanging on while shooting the arrow? Well, it's because they got some shoulder arms. It's a creature snake, warrior, archer. It's a 2 2. When it deals combat damage to a creature, tap that creature and doesn't untap during its close next. Untap step, cool. Pay green. It may block as though it had flying until end of turn. So you pay green, give it reach, and when it block deals damage to a creature, that creature doesn't untap. By Heather Hudson, got some poison in the arrows or something like that. Look at this art. This is fantastic. Look at the art on this. This lady has a crazy dragon arms going on. Got like three candles above its head. Crazy looking vortex in the background. Interesting like geometric patterns kind of. Some white energy emitting from her chest. Not sure what's going on here. Death of a Thousand Stings. Four and a black. Tiger player loses one life. You gain one life. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have more cards in your hand than each opponent, you may return Death of a Thousand Stings from your graveyard to your hand. So you can just keep stinging them. This is a super expensive card, though. Weird. Five mana to do one damage. But you can kind of keep playing it for five mana. Scott M. Fisher. But, like, what are you going to do, that 20 turns to win the game? I mean, possibly. It could be a win condition. Scott M. Fisher, very interesting instant arcane. Got Curtain of Light. The Curtain of Light is shutting itself on this crazy-looking creature. It looks like these little blue guys are covering their heads and screaming in agony. It looks like some sort of moth-snake hybrid hiding in the dark. One in a white, instant, target attacking, unblocking creature becomes blocked, draw a card, so it'll just stop an attacker by Chippy. Got Ronin Cave Keeper. It's the samurai. I finally got a samurai. Five in a red. Hanging out in the cave. Got some like a kiki masks going on right there. Like literally, he took the face off of these little goblin guys and put him in his cave. Crazy. And he's got his gauntlet on. He looks a little tired, waking up, pushing the rock out of the way. It's got Bushido 2. Love this ability. When this blocks or becomes block, it's plus 2, plus 2 on 10 of torrents. It's a 4 3. And when he 
blocks or becomes blocked, this thing becomes a 6-5. How sweet is that? Love this card. By Paulo Parente. Looks like I'm on to the uncommon. The Rat Shaman. The, the Locust Mister. It's the Mister of the Locust. He's telling the Locust where to go. It's a crazy stream of them hanging out. Look at his tail. Very long. Reminds me of Splinter from uh, the Ninja Turtles. Two and two black. Each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by two. It's a 2-2. Two, two. How awesome is that? So the maximum hand size is five. If you got a bunch of these out, they just keep adding to each other. By Alan Pallock. This is a great card. Got a uh, Manriki uh, Gusari. Too generic. Looks like some crazy sordid weapon with the handle on it. Oh, no. Actually, this uh, chain grabbed and broke the sword. This little rat guy throwing the sword. Or breaking the sword. Equip creature gets plus one, plus two, and has tap, destroy target enchantment. So one. That's pretty destroy target equipment. That's pretty cool. So it can just constantly destroy equipment. By Thomas Gotti. Looks like I got a rushing tide zubra. I forgot about the zubras. Two and two blue. Beautiful art. Reminds me of something from Alien coming out of this crazy portal in the ground with fire around it. Zubra spirit. By Mark Brill. It's a three three. When it's put into a graveyard from play, if four or more damage was dealt to this turn, draw three cards. So, if it was dealt more than four damage, you draw three cards. And then the rare I got, cool, it looks like I got some sort of flip flip card. It's awesome. It is uh, Kuno, Ogre, Ascendant. It's three black to play. You can tell which way is the correct way because the symbol is down there. So this is the bottom, this is the top. Three, gener uh, three black mana. At end of turn, if three or more creatures were put into a graveyard from play, this turn, flip Kondo Ogre Ascendant. It's a 2-4, but when three or more creatures died, you flip it. Cool art. And then it becomes... At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. It becomes an enchantment. It turns from a creature to an enchantment. How cool is that? I don't know if, uh, you, dest if you destroy it, though. It can't turn into an enchantment. That's pretty cool. Crazy looking art. It turns from this creature doing some sort of chant just into the chant itself. And that's pretty sweet. The beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. That's a pretty good enchantment to have out for three mana. If you can make three creatures die, how cool is that? So that was the first pack. Got quite a few of these left. Let's open them up and go with it. I'm pretty sure you can get foils in this set. Got a Shrine of the Furies. A fire, two and a red, creature spirit, crazy looking spirit running through the desert, some energy orbs falling around it, beautiful art by Dan Frey, it's a 2-1 with haste, and as channel, I'm sure you can give a creature haste, yep. Got Descendant of Saramaro, three and a blue, human wizard, and uh, one and a blue, look at the top, X cards of your library, X is the number of cards in your hand, put them back in any order, it's a 2-3, that's pretty sweet, so you got seven cards in your hand. You can descry seven. How awesome is that by Brian Despain? Looks like a noble or something like that. Elder Pine of uh, Jukai. Two and a green creature spirit. Whenever you play a spirit or arcane spell, reveal the top three cards of your library. Put all land cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. And it's Soul Ship 2. It's a 2 1 by Alan Pallock. Crazy looking art. Don't know what's going on. Some crazy spirit animals going on there. Love it. The abstract. Art. Look at his arm. Looks like some crazy boomerang. Spinning out locust. Creepy. Sink into Technuma. Three and a black. Sorcery Arcane. It's got sweep. Return any number of swamps you control to their owner's hand. Target player discards a card for each swamp. Return this way. That's pretty cool. With four mana, and you can make him discard as many cards as swamps you have by Pat Lee. Really want to finish off the game? Do it with that. Crazy looking bamboo forest with hands coming out of the ground. Not sure if this guy's going to pick the hands or step on them. Crazy. Got a Kitsua Dawnblade. Four and a white. Bushido one. When it comes into play, you may tap to target creatures. A 2-3 by Carl Critchillo. Hanging out in uh, the bamboo field with this crazy lighted up sword. Reminds me of Yoshimitsu from Tekken 3. Got a Sokuzan Spellblade. Four and a red. It's an Ogre Shaman. A Samurai Shaman. A lot going on right there. Bushido 1. When it blocks or becomes blocked, it's plus 1, plus 1. It's 1 in a red. Gets plus X, plus 0. So for X is the number of cards in your hand. So there's a lot of things in this set that make you want to have a whole bunch of cards in your hand. I'm pretty sure that card 1 with nothing is in here. That'd be fun if we got that. 2, 3. And this is by Carl Critchlow again. Crazy looking ogre with like a 
ball of fire in his hand and a sword in the other. So he's a shaman, samurai. There you go. Got inner fire. This is a pretty good card. Three and a red. Add red to your mana pool for each card in your hand. There's a lot of cards that really want you to have a whole bunch of cards in your hand. Got this guy sitting there chanting some sort of prey. Some crazy red energy is flying from it and just digging into the ground. Cool. By Christopher Moyer. Got a Obero Breeze Collar. Beautiful art by Rebecca Gua. I could tell. One and a blue. Beautiful looking woman. Almost like a geisha or something. In the cloud. She's like literally made of clouds. And you got the city in the background flying. Two. Return a land you control to its owner's hand. Untap target land. It's a 1-1 one, one, and you can untap a land. Interesting. I don't know why you'd want to do that. But I'm sure there are some instances where you want to. It's a Moonfolk Wizard. Beautiful. This is the foil card I got right here. It promised Kanushi. Got Shrine of Fierce Chill. Look at the purples in there. Some crazy looking dragon creature. You can see the tiny little face with their yellow, little yellow eyes. Some green orbs in it. Came from the ground. Four and a black creature spirit. Can't be blocked. And so you channel it. One and a black a creature can't be blocked this turn. Three, two creature by Darren Ritchie. Beautiful art. Look at the colors and they're so vibrant. They came out of the ground. Beautiful. Got a shape stealer. Two blue. Looks like this thing is made out of water or like molten metal. You got a samurai head in the front. You got a creature, spell shifter, spirit. Whenever a shape stealer blocks or becomes black card with a creature, uh, its power and toughness uh, change its power and toughness equal to that creature's power and toughness till end of turn. So 1-1, one, one, so when it blocks a 7-7, seven, seven, it becomes a 7-7. Seven, seven. So whatever it blocks, it pretty much kills. It's almost like death touch to some degree, which is pretty cool. Except... That's that's really cool. So if, even if you have to block like a 2020 with trample, this thing becomes a 2020. Stand back. I know just what to do. I don't know if he does. By Jim Nielsen. Cool art. Love it. Love the field in the background. It's an uncommon. Got charge across the Abra. Four and a white. Crazy looking locust creatures running at you. Love the tilt to the ground right there. Lovely yellow sky. Instant arcane. Got sweep. Return any number of planes you control to the owner's hand. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one to end of turn for each plane's return this way. You can finish off the game with this if you want. It's kind of expensive to play, but you can give it like plus whatever planes you have and maybe win the game by Danny Ort Ortizo. And it is an instant, which is pretty cool. Got a descendant of Masumoro. Two and a green. This guy's hanging out in the forest, training. Got a spear arm going on. The spirits are coming from this little hut right there. It's a human monk. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a 1-1 counter on it. For each card in your hand, then remove a 1-1 counter on uh, Matsumura for each card in target opponent's hand. So this card, you really want to have way more cards in, than your hand than your opponent's hand. If your opponent has more cards than you, you're going to have to probably remove all the counters plus some to put them in the graveyard. But if you have like 5 cards in your hand, they have like 0. This thing gets plus 5 counters every turn by Rob Alexander. Awesome. And then it looks like the rare I got is Scroll of Origins. Two generic. It's an artifact. Two and tap. Draw a card if you have seven or more cards in hand. So if you got a bunch of cards in hand, you can just keep getting more cards in hand. It looks like some crazy scroll made out of bone or something like that by Danny Ortiz. It looks like I got a foil. Got Elder Pine of Jakku. Oh, sweet. This is some cool art, too. I got the foil of that really crazy art card. Spitting out the locusts. I don't even know what's going on here. If it's walking or flying. It's got like an eye on its side right there. Is that the tongue? I think that's some sort of tongue right there. It's spitting out locusts. Crazy. You don't want to see that in the forest. Set that to the side. So I did get a foil. We've got four more packs to go. Hope you're all doing wonderful today. It's starting to get extremely hot here. Some heat advisory going on for sure. I can just open these up. Who's on the front of this pack? Looks like some crazy face. Cool. Love the colors of these packs. Got Monomo Scroll Keeper. It's Defender. It's a one and a bloop. It's a two three. Your maximum hand size is increased by run one. So your hand size is eight eight. Apollo Parenti. How cool is that? More card draw. There's a lot to do with card draw and uh, maximum hand size. Got no Night Soil Kami. Four and two green with Soul Shift Five. It's a six four by Jim Nielsen. So when it dies, search your graveyard. Uh, you can put a card, a spirit card from your graveyard with converted mana cost five or less uh, into your hand. Pretty cool. This card has a huge soul shift. Soul shift seven? How crazy is that? That's pretty cool. Definitely want that in some sort of spirit deck. It's a six four. Somehow load up your graveyard, then sack this guy and just take whatever spirit you want back. How cool is that? Six four. By sync into uh, Take Numa again. 
the hands coming out of the bamboo forest. Got a Kitsune Lore Weaver. Beautiful. Look at the sunset. Look at the tree in the background. Looks like this crazy. Yep, it's a fox cleric doing some sort of symbols with their hands. Looks like a small little metalworking hammer there. One and a white creature fox cleric. It's a 2 1 by Eric Polka. One and a white gets plus zero plus X on the turn. With X is the number of cards in your hand. So many things with cards in your hand in this set. How cool is that, though? Beautiful art. Love the art. Fantastic. Got another one of these goblin orc. No, the orc samurai shamans. Got a press of will, two and a blue. Counter target spell, and this is totally pays one for each card in your hand. So it could be a counter spell. Instant speed for two and a blue. Looks like this crazy creature is being blasted back to eternity by Pat Lee. Into the fray, one red target uh, creature attacks this turn if able. Splice into arcane. One red. Looks like the Akiki guy. This like frost spirit literally chucked him. Coming right at you. It looks like the card art of fling or something like that. Crazy blue eyes. Paula Parente. Fun. Murmurs from beyond. This creepy looking guy is doing all this research. The painted blue nails. And then you got these spirits talking to him saying, Don't stop now. You gotta keep doing... You gotta keep raiding for us. Two in a blue. Instant arcana. Reveal, two, reveal the top three cards of your library. An opponent chooses one. Put that card in your graveyard and the rest into your hand. Like pools of fog uh, that hide treacherous rocks from sailors. Eyes. Uh, so we too are hands of Kami. The Kami... Is telling you what to do. It's a pretty cool card. Got uh, Dosan's oldest chant. Four and a green. Gain six life and draw a card by sorcery speed. Looks like this person is praying in front of the giant tree. Giving it his energy. And drawing some card. Beautiful art. Like the blues in the trees. Got the lovely foreground right there. Crazy looking. What is this? Like ropes going up to the tree. Some huge ropes on there. And just this cool praying by Tim. Brand. Beautiful art. Got the Nap Master. I remember this card. Great card, especially a booster hand size. Just a one black for a 1 1 rat. And their hand size is reduced by one. Literally, have a bunch of these cards in your deck. Make their hand size just reduced by one. Creepy looking art. It's got hairy pits going on right there. Crazy looking long fingernails with blue energy coming off of it. Red looking beady eyes and yellow teeth by Thomas M. Baxa. Crazy. Got an Araba Moth Rider. Remember this card. It's a flying samurai with Bushido 1. It's a 1-1. One, one. And when it blocks or becomes blocked, it's a 2-2 two, two with flying for only 2 mana. Cool card. Riding on the giant moth. Whew. By Anthony S. Waters. Got a Stampeding uh, Soro. 2-2 two two green trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, return green creature who controls his owner's hand. It's a 5-4 by Edward P. Beard Jr. Got like a rabbit, a wolf, or are these like wolves or like antelope or something? They got little horns on them. Very interesting hybrid creatures right there. Cool. This is an uncommon. Got footsteps of the Goryo. Two in a black. Looks like some sort of spirit. His head is way down there. And there's also a mock head up there. Holding some giant sword. Sorcerer Arcanine. Recruit target creature card from your graveyard to play. Sacrifice that creature at the end of turn. That's pretty cool. Three mana. Return a creature from your graveyard to play. But then you gotta sacrifice it. But that's pretty sweet. By Chippy. Got Descendant of uh, Kiyomaro, 1 and 2 white, creature, human, soldier. It's a 2-3 by Christopher Rush. As long as you have uh, more cards in hand than each opponent, it gets plus 1, plus 2. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to you, gain 3 life. Oh, whenever this creature deals combat damage, you gain 3 life. So it kind of gives you some sort of life link. Uh, we gain 3 life only, and then it becomes a 3-5. Uh, cool. Then it looks like the rare I got. Well, it looks like I got a rare foil. That's pretty cool. I got a Bantu, so I guess that replaced, I guess the foil replaces whatever card. I got Bantuus Curin, 5 and 2 green, legendary creature, Curin Spirit. Uh, flying, whenever you play a Spirit Arcane spell, you gain life equal to that spell's converted mana cost. It's a 4-4. Four, four. I'll close that. And who drew this? Shizbaru. So whenever you play a Cure, uh, Spirit Arcane, you gain life equal to the converted mana cost. So just keep gaining life. Crazy looking uh, art. Like a deer kind of head mixed in with like an elk body. Metallic looking with like a snake tail. Not sure what these orbs are floating around them, but cool. Lovely. So we got a nice little rare foil going on there. Let's just go up to the next couple packs. Got the little Ikiki underling again. The Ikiki underling. Got another, oh no, Moonblow Illusionist. Two and a blue. Moonfolk Wizard playing with the elements right there. Taking out the earth, the fire, the sky, and the water. Very pale woman right there. It's a flying. Two, return a land you control to its owner's hand. 
Uh, target land becomes a basic land type of your choice until end of turn. By Dan Frage, it's a 2-1. Pretty much change land. That's what it's doing. You got Intercom Outer Strength 2 and a green instant arcane. Uh, target creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of cards in your hands. So the more cards in your hands, obviously the more strength and toughness it will get. By Steven Tapper. Looks like it's some sort of creature doing some sort of chant making these giant obelisks float. Got a Kegmaro's Clutch. Crazy looking art. It's an enchant creature. Creature gets negative X, negative X, where X is the number of cards in your hand. So the more cards you have, the more X it does. And it's negative counters. That's pretty cool. Three and a white, uh, three and a black. Breathing out this purple energy. Wow. By Pat Lee. Got a Kitsune Lore Weaver again. Lovely art. Love the art. The sunset. The crazy looking fox cleric. And the tree. Love the lone tree. Shinin of the Furies. Eye again. Beautiful art. Love the color. So beautiful. Another Moth Rider. Path of Anger's Flame, two and a red. Instant Arcane and creatures you control get plus two, plus zero until end of turn. For three mana by Pat Lee. Crazy, give him some strength. Got some sort of like scythes going on right there. Not sure what this is. Someone's sword coming down, ready to fight. Crazy fires powering him up. But ideas unbound again, sucking out the knowledge from him. Got a rending veins, one and two green. Instant Arcane. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. If it's converted to mana cost, is less to equal to the number of cards in your hand, and then draw a card. That's alright, but you have to really count on having a lot of cards in your hand for this to work. Looks like it turned the samurai's armor into just a bunch of plants. Fun art. Dan Frazier. Frazier. Got another Nat Master. Reduce that hand size. Got Captive Flame. Two and a red. Enchantment. And you can pump up creatures, give it more uh, power. Target creature gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Kills and cooks your food in one easy stroke. Vibrant colors. Love the blue background and then the hot red and yellow and oranges in the front. Just running around with flames, powering them up by Keith uh, Garlitz. Cool. So whatever creature you want, just pump it on up. Got Ghost Lit Warden, one in a blue. Holding his like lantern with like some spirit in it. I love these little orbs fall floating around. Creature spirit. Three and a blue. Counter target spell unless the controller plays two. That's pretty sweet. It's like a counter spell that's always there if you want. And it has channel three. And uh, you can pretty much use this as a counter spell unless they pay four. It's a one-one creature. But that's pretty cool. Then it looks like next card I got is Molten Skin. Two and a green. Ripping off their skin. Pretty creepy. It's screaming in pain. And now it's renewed and fresh. Enchantment. Return Molten Skin to its owner's hand. Regenerate target creature. We have learned much from the Orochi. Jeremy Jarvis. And then uh, looks like I got a Seki Seasons Guide. Is this the rare? No, it's, it's a, it is the rare. It's not the rare four I got. Five and three green. Legendary Creature Spirit. It's a zero zero by Kev Walker. Comes into play with plus one plus one count with eight plus one plus one counters on it. So it comes into play as an eight eight. If damage would be dealt, prevent that damage or remove that many one one counters from it. Then put that many color spirit creature tokens into play. Sacrifice eight spirits return uh, from your graveyard to play. That's pretty sweet. So it, if you make eight spirits, you can just sacrifice it, return it to play. Huge mana cost. Uh, eight mana for an eight eight, and whenever it's dealt damage, if it's dealt two damage, remove two of the counters. It becomes a six six, and make two spirits. And so pretty much when it's dealt eight damage, uh, it makes eight spirits, and sacrifice those eight spirits, just return it to play. So it kind of comes back and forth this cycle of life. Beautiful, lovely card. This is fun. Next two little packs that I have, just a couple left. That's a really cool card, actually. So if it's dealt 8 damage and it dies, you make that many spirits. And then sacrifice 8 of them. And then, uh... Oh, no. Yeah, you sacrifice 8 of them and return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. Having a hard time opening up this one. Right. Must be something good in there. Here we go. There we go. Here we go. What's this one? Another Akiki. Akiki Drill Master. Two and a red. He's coming right at you with a taser in his hand. He's saying, what are you doing? I'm going to taser you. He's tasering him in the butt. Goblin Shaman. Tap. Tiger Creature gains haste on the left turn to 2-2. Two, two. It's like a cattle prod. He's saying, go faster. By Alan Pellock. Cool. So give a creature haste. And it's Goblin. Got a Press of Will again. Counter that spell. Elder Pine. Uh, uh, Jacqui. Got the foil of this. Awesome foil. Crazy looking art. Got Kami of Empty Graves, three in a black. Looks like the Skeleton Warrior or something like that. It's a spirit made out of the mess of bones from the swamp. 
lovely colors. It's got Soul Shift 3. It's a 4-1 by Greg Hildebrandt. Four mana for a 4-1, and when it dies, uh, put a, uh, when it's put in graveyard, you may return target spirit card to convert a mana cost three or less from a graveyard to your hand. So, if this was in your graveyard and this died, you can return this to your hand because it has three mana cost. Got Tori, a watch ward, four and a white. Crazy looking art, looks like some sort of mixed creature. Got like eight arms going on, crazy like arms and legs. Got eyes on its arms and got like swords of ice running through the uh, frozen tundra. Got the beautiful night sky in the background. She's coming right at you. It's creature spirit with vigilance and soul shift four. It's a three three by Jeff Miracola. That's pretty sweet. The art is pretty sweet. Crazy art. So many arms. Reminds me of that one god with all the arms. Barrel down. Uh, Skoznetzan. Two in a red. Instant arcana. Got sweep. Return any number of mounds you control to this owner's hand. It deals damage to target creature. Equal to twice the number of mounds returned this way. I wish you could do a two player. But that might be a little too overpowered by Greg Staples. That's pretty cool though. Three mana. Return any number of mounts to your hand. You return five, do five damage to a target creature. I don't know why you want to do that unless that creature was really about to win the game on you. Looks like a face in these like balls coming at you. Got Shr uh, Shin of Fierce Chill again. Curtain of Light. Another Into the Fray fun art coming right at you. Throwing this tiny little guy. Got a Dream Catcher. Beautiful, crazy looking art. Looks like an Eldrazi or something like that. Some sort of jellyfish face. Got like some float bladders. Literally stealing this guy's dreams. He's dreaming right here. Beautiful place to dream. And it's stealing him. Turning it into energy or something. Feeding off of it. Not sure if that's another creature there. Or if that's itself. Crazy looking jellyfish. And its head makes clouds. One blue. Creature spirit's a 1-1. One, one. Whenever you play a spirit or arcane spell, you may sacrifice dream catcher. If you do, draw a card. That's crazy. That's a crazy card. By Mark Tennant. Love the art. Beautiful. Got Do Sun's oldest chant again. Got Trusted Advisor. This is the Emperor, and he says, What should I do? Should I go to war? Should I not? And he says, You should make some pie. Uh, four blue. I mean, one blue. <laughs> your maximum hand size is increased by two, so your maximum hand size is nine. The beginning of your upkeep, re return a blue card, a blue creature you control to its owner's hand. It's a one, two. Hmm, interesting. I don't know why you want to do that, but you just you you have to return a blue creature you control to your owner's hand by Jim Nielsen. So serious their faces. Got a hail of arrows, X and a white deals X damage divided. You choose any number of attacking creatures. So I'll pay all your mana. It's an instant speed. Put deal all that damage any way you choose among other creatures. You got arrows coming right at you. Some hollow arrows. Just a crazy mess of arrows flying at you by Anthony S. Waters. Then you got Kashi Tribe Elite. One and two green. It's a snake warrior. Legendary snakes you control. Uh, can't be targeted spells or abilities. That's pretty sweet. Whenever Kashi Tribe Elder deals combat damage to a creature, tap that creature. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. It's a two, three, and it protects your legendary snakes. I wish that it protected all snakes. Literally dancing in the sky, jumping off the tree, and some sort of snake warrior. It just looks like a lizard person. All right. And then the next, the last rare I got, well, one more pack, the rare I got is Almaro First to Desire. One and two red. It looks like the guy that's on the pack. If I can find it. Looks like this guy right here. It's a legendary creature spirit. His power is star star. And its power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in hand of an opponents with the most card in hand. Okay, so... Uh, usually don't want to have your opponent having a lot of cards in hand, but I guess this time you kind of do for this creature. So if they have three cards in hand, it's just a 3-3. Three, three. It is pretty cheap to put out there, so if it's early on in the game, they might have like five cards in hand. It could be a 5-5 five, five for three, which is pretty cool. Crazy looking art. Got like heads floating around it. It's like pushing out some steam from these like vents in his head. Some crazy looking demon by Paulo Parente. And on to the last little pack. So much fun opening up these older sets. Haven't opened up some of these packs in a really long time, and I've never opened up a pet pack like this. Super interesting that it comes with like an actual book. I find that fantastic. Got Coward by Wisdom again. Got another Ikiki Underling. Got Shinnan of the Flight's Wings again. Crazy looking art. Looks like some frog spirit creature. Got the Fiddlehead Kami. Got Death Denied. I feel like this is the same pack. 
This seems like the same pack. Shine of the Star's Light into the fray. Got murmurs from beyond. I feel like this is very similar. I feel like this pack has been done before. Nap Master again. Almost got a whole playset of those. Got the Moth Rider. Got a Stampeding Zero again. Coming right at you. The Beast with Trample. The beginning of your upkeep. Return the green creature control to its owner's hand. Got a... There we go. New card. Yuki Ona. Three and a red creature spirit. Whenever Yuki Ona comes into play, destroy target artifact. It's pretty cool. It's a 3-1. Whenever you play a spirit or arcane spell, you may return it to its owner's hand. And this is drawn by Hideki Takamaru. That's pretty cool. And then the next card I got is Footsteps of Goryo. We got this one again. And then the rare I got is uh, Mishin the Mind's Cage. It looks like the mind is some sort of maze in this. And you can see his eyeball. You can see these creatures trying to find their way out. Or their people trying to find their way out. But can they? I don't know. Four and three blue. Legendary enchantment. All creatures get negative X, negative zero. Where X is the number of cards in your hand. That's pretty cool. Huge to put out there. But if you have a bunch of cards in your hands. Prevent a whole bunch of damage to you. By Thomas Ghani. Anyways. So much fun to open up this set. I did get a couple foils. It comes with two. A uh, foil common and a foil land. And I did get a... Uh, a foil common, and I got a foil rare as well, which is pretty sweet. Came with some nice little rares right here. Some of them on the packs right here. Got two, got three legend, well, four legendaries, which is pretty sweet. This is one of the first few sets that had a whole bunch of legendaries in it. So much fun. I think that's when they made the legendary rule. There's like the mirror gallery as well. Actually, I'm not sure if that's when they made the legendary rule, but there was a card called mirror gallery, which got rid of it. Just a bunch of cards right here. This is a pretty cool card. This rat shine. Reduced their hand size by two. And just a whole bunch of comments right here. Love the samurai themes. Love the art on this set. The art is fantastic. Love the purples. Really such a great set. One of my favorites when I was younger. I love the Champions of Kamigawa as well. The rat shaman going on there. Got quite a few uh, rat gnat masters. Just going through these cards. Gnat master. Crazy looking art. Hairy armpits. Creepy eyes. Long fingernails. Beautiful art. Love this art right here. Got the tree in the background. This fox cleric up front. Lovely purple beast right here. Just so much fun. Crazy art. This crazy creature. Got a foil of that one. Yeah, just like really fun to open this up. An older set. It's pretty cool. It came with all this stuff. Came with a nice little like pamphlet with all the cards and some information about the lore and stuff like that. Uh, really nice just little pamphlet. Let's see if I can find any cards that I found in here. Right here, this is the card that I got actually in foil. It actually came with uh, a dice right here. I got a blue one, 20 sided dice, a spin down. Got the set symbol right there. Sabers are coming out, set symbol, little like tower lantern. And then it actually comes with a nice little book. It is book three of the Kamigawa cycle. To finish off your information of the lore, it has that older book smell going on right there. How much fun is that? Comes with a small little book. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this type of thing. I have a lot of fun opening it up and checking it out with you all. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you like these kind of openings. I just want to say thanks for stopping by. Stay cool out there. And I hope you're having a beautiful, wonderful day.